Now the purpose of this video then is going to attempt to show you how to draw very quick product design style sketches that might be good for a GCSE or A level folder just using uh, the love it or hate it Microsoft OneNote for Windows 10. It is actually possible to get some half decent images out of this and all you really need is to follow a few, few sets of rules which I'm going to try and show you now. So this is the kind of thing we're aiming for. This might be what you present at the start of a design folder where you're just exploring concept ideas for a product. I've no idea what these things are. I was just doodling and sketching. I think the thing in the bottom left sort of turned into a radio CD player. Um, the cube was really just an experiment. But I'm going to show you the same method I did uh, to get these designs to kind of be done quickly and also pop out of the page in OneNote. And of course, the benefit of doing any of your drawing on a tablet like this, um, and I'm actually drawing on a Surface Pro at the moment, is that you can just copy and paste these, cut and paste them, you can go backwards, control Z or click the back arrow if you make a mistake. So it's a lot more forgiving than on paper. Anyway, enough rambling. I'm gonna find myself a blank bit of space. And my first recommendation, get the pencil tool and pick the smallest, finest line you can. Go to more colors and I think I'm gonna go gray, more colors. I'm gonna pick one of the lightest shades of gray I can. Um, you'll see why in a minute this is going to be a construction line. Now I've got my tablet lying down on the table, I'm drawing with a Microsoft pen. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it with a mouse, you won't get very good results. So I'm just going to start sketching and I'm, I have no idea what I'm going to make, I'm just going to start doodling. So very, very faint lines. Now what, I, what I'm doing at the moment is just moving my mouse around in a shape. All right? I started to aim for a cylinder and I'm not bothered about any of these lines looking neat. Okay. Um, I'm going to add a square bit onto this and we'll we'll see what kind of a product this turns into eventually. Okay, I've no idea. Um, that looks alright, but I'd rather these corners were rounded, so I'm going to draw a sense of roundness here. And when you want to emphasise something and firm it up, just do a few more pencil lines. But I must emphasise you really, really go gently. Uh, that's the whole point. Okay, I've got a vague form there. I think, I don't know what this thing is still. I think some kind of dome here. Um, this looks like it's maybe forming into some kind of board game or alarm system. I don't really know. So I've got a dome. Um, and I'm just going to leave it at that because I want to show you the method more than the product. All right. Okay, when you've got a sense of an object, I hope you can see where I've drawn these multiple very faint grey lines. Um, you can start to see an image appearing out of those. All right, and it doesn't matter if you're terrible at drawing, you could, you know, draw your designs very much two dimensionally. So if I was doing this dome thing, it might look something like that, uh, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to switch to the black pen tool now and use the finest black outline I can. And then what I'm going to do is just with single, very deliberate lines, I'm going to start to outline this in. So what I'm trying to aim for is the lines that I like and in some ways get rid of the lines that I wasn't interested in. Okay. And I apologize for my sniffles. I am suffering with a cold at the moment. So you're going to hear a lot of that. I apologize. Okay, right, uh, now this sense of roundness, I don't want to leave there, so I'm just going to continue this around here. Okay, and I've got a dome shape, which again, I'm just drawing in one single line. Okay, now I'm deliberately going to cross over there and make a mistake. One thing you may not realize, by default, uh, one that, uh, OneNote switches to what's called large eraser. And it's really frustrating because if you click on a line to erase it, um, actually, sorry, a stroke eraser it switches to, you click on a line to erase it and it gets rid of the whole line rather than just part of it. Um, I'm just going to press back. If you choose these three eraser tools, small, medium or large, they only erase the bit of the line that you want to get rid of. And you won't believe how long I didn't realize that that was a feature in OneNote. Um, and it's probably because they never bother advertising it. Anyway, enough, I digress. So I've drawn my rough shape. Um, a little trip you can do or trick you can do here. Sorry, if you want to show a sense of form, you can do what are called contour lines. So I'm going to just sort of show a kind of arcing shape here. And I don't know if you can see how that now looks. It almost implies that this has got a curve to the top of it just by drawing some context lines or contour lines, I should say. Okay, 
I'm going to put a hole in the top here as well. Don't know what that is. Maybe some kind of speaker. Good, but not great. Um, next step, we're going to move on to pencil tool and just pick your color here. Now I would advise go for a light shade of whatever color you want. So I'm going to go for green and I'm going to go more colors and I'm going to start with I quite like this pastel green here. Okay. Now with the pencil tool, um, I would advise going no bigger than number three. If you turn your Microsoft pen tool on its side, like you're shading on the edge, you can block fill quite quickly. And what I would do is just without going too crazy, remember look, if you stuff up, just press backwards. That's the beauty. Anyway, so very roughly block it out with the, I'm, I'm sh shading on the sort of, by leaning my pencil on its side. Don't worry too much if you go over those inside lines because we're going to draw them back in a minute, but you do want to be able to vaguely see them to get a sense of where they are. And I know if I was more professional, I'd be able to do this in like a time lapse or something, but I'm not and I don't know how, so you're going to have to deal with it. Okay. Right. Now, obviously, I can't get very close to the edges there, so I'm now going to switch to a smaller size, maybe point the second one along and I'm going to hold the pen more upright and the more upright you hold it the fainter the lines get and all I'm going to do is just block in and I'm not going to be too fussy don't worry about getting rid of every little bit of white space because that's not going to matter when we apply the next techniques okay I'm actually going to up it back to three and just turn the, the pencil straight on so experiment um, and again I'm not saying this is the rules this is not how you have to do it it's just a technique that works for me and try it out yourself and see if you can get some half decent looking images all right good there we go and another tip while you're doing this i find it helps if you kind of draw in the direction that the the lines are flowing it gives a sense of um of depth to it i sound like i know what i'm talking about don't i there we go but you'll see i'm kind of following the path of the lines as i shade in all right good sometimes i don't i just give up like that because I'm mental. There we go. Okay. I know you're thinking, thank God he's shut up with his stupid sniffly voice. But I haven't, I'm back. Okay, colouring that in. Good. Right, that'll do. What I would recommend doing next, uh, I'm, I'm just going to do this dome in a different colour. I'm going to go for like a blue. Same deal, bulk it out, like so. Best you can, don't worry about being too fancy. Switch to a smaller size and then turn the pencil endways on rather than laying it flat so you can fill in the detail. Again, don't go mental, just get the bulk of it coloured. You'll see why in a minute. This is all about speed. We don't want to spend days doing these drawings. Right. Um, on the blue, I'm going to now switch to a slightly darker shade. So I'm going to go something like that. And what I'm going to do now is just round the outline. Now this isn't proper drawing practice, but again, I find it works for me. I'm just going to do a very different shade around the perimeter. And I'm actually going to color that whole bit in the middle dark, just so it looks deeper. I'm going to do the same with the green. So I'm going to go find that green I was using, more colors, and then pick a slightly darker shade. And I'm going to go around the edge of my model with that. Now that's a little bit thick, so I'm going to go and choose. Point two. Okay. Why oh, have I just opened my email? Didn't want to do that. Ignore that. Thank you. Um, and what I'm also doing is going over these kind of pencil, uh, what I call pencil lines, but those initial black lines I did. All right. Again, not too worried about neatness. And what you'll see is this color kind of fills in even more of those white gaps. And you can't see it because you're only seeing the screen, but I'm actually turning my tablet around on the table in front of me. So my tablet's actually sideways on to how I'm facing on the table at the moment. You can probably hear god awful scraping noise. And the reason I do that is much easier to shade by turning the page around. Um, it's This is what you do with real paper. <sighs> Sorry about the noise. Uh, I find it much easier rather than trying to twist your hand into some contorted kind of angle. All right, maybe a little bit more along here. Good. Okay, that'll do. Right, now for the magic. I would like you now to go back to the black pen tool 
and choose the second point along. Okay, and what you're going to do now, just going around the perimeter and very carefully and kind of trying to cover over your mistakes, you're just going to do a black outline all around the outside. Imagine you're purely tracing the outside of your shape. Have you noticed, by the way, that I haven't even used the eraser and my pencil lines that I drew right at the start that looked all messy and scraggly have basically faded into nothing. We, our eyes not focused on them anymore. Notice also the really annoying scraping sound because I continue to rot my, rotate my tablet around on the table. Um, and that's all you want to do. If it's particularly scrappy in some areas, then don't be afraid to thicken that black line up again. Um, but what that does is if you zoom out, you can see it makes it pop out of the page. It's a really, really simple technique, but very, very important for presenting graphic designs. What I do next, I'm going to go back to the black pen tool and choose the finer one. And I'm going to go back over these black details in here that I wanted to, to keep, but making sure it's a finer pen. Okay. And it's down to you what detail you go into. I just use it to kind of give a sense of my drawing. Now really, this is a bit scrappy around there. That'd have been better off as one line, but it just helps to distinguish those edges that you're trying to keep important. That's close enough. Maybe the contour lines. Okay, and definitely going around that speaker. Okay. Right, at this point, you can start to add your details in. Now, I, I don't know what this is. Um, it's looking like maybe some kind of cushion, some, if it was the other way around, rotated hunt, sort of 90 degrees to the right, it might be like a seat or I don't know what the thing is. It doesn't really matter. The point is it's the technique. Um, I'm going to start adding some buttons on. So symbolism is really important. We all know when we look at a product, if we see that little triangle symbol, it means play, doesn't it? And we all know that if we see two little rectangles, it means pause and then of course stop. Now those are kind of universal symbols. You see those on a product, if it's electrical and it's got something to do with playing or pausing or starting or stopping, visually that communicates straight away to the person looking at it, ah, oh, this is an electrical bit of equipment. Um, your brain starts to understand it. Likewise, you might want to draw um, a power button. Now think, power buttons tend to just have that symbol, that little, I've drawn it terribly, so I'm gonna do it again. This is where drawing in one note's much better. Gonna zoom in going to draw a little open U and a little up bit like that. And now it looks like we've got a power symbol. Um, this is an electrical device that might have some kind of speaker on it. Speakers are very easily represented by just drawing vertical lines. Okay, and that implies there's somewhere in the case for the sound to come out. Um, you could, if you wanted, do some kind of symbols coming off it like that. If you really wanted to emphasize the fact that this produces sound, um, you could show light by using like the highlighter tool or a very faint color. So maybe this glows blue. So I'm going to go get blue, more colors, really, really faint. And then just doing some very light edges on like this gives a sense that this thing produces light. Um, you do what you like, really. It's down to you. I would advise keep to fewer colors, keep to lighter colors. Um, and then if you've got details you want to jump out at people, maybe color them in. So I'm gonna go color my switches in. So I need a smaller size, there we go. I'm gonna color them in red, just because it draws attention to them. Okay. And this drawing is pretty much done because I don't want to spend ages. So I have spent 14 minutes drawing one sketch. That means in an hour's lesson, you should be able to get at least three done, I'd have thought. Um, I'm gonna put a bit of color on that one just around the outline. Okay, there we go. Oh, YOLO, I'll just color it in and do it again. Okay, brilliant. Right. If you're fussy, you could go around and get your eraser tool now, remember, and then just tidy out those pencil marks if you don't like them. But in all honesty, I sometimes like to leave them in place because it, it kind of gives a sense of depth to the drawing. Uh, but the point is, that is your image. Um, it's done, it's a product, it's an idea. And you can see with three of them on a page, if I was to uh, put them onto a PowerPoint presentation and talk about them, they look professional, they look great, and it's not taken me hours and hours of drawing to achieve it. Obviously, 
you know, people are born, or not born, but people have different levels of practice with drawing and some will find drawing shapes easier than others. Um, you know, maybe I'm a little bit more practiced, but ignore whether you can draw in 3D or how well you can draw. Just use those methods of pencil outline, fine outline, shade it in, go around the whole thing with a bold um, black pen to make it pop out of the page, add details that communicate without words. They are my top tips. And one thing I will say, if you do wish to do annotation, you shouldn't have to annotate that speaker. It's obvious. You don't have to annotate these little um, play, pause and stop buttons. It's obvious what they do. You shouldn't have to annotate that. So don't. Annotate the things that matter. So for instance, I don't really know what this dome thing's supposed to be. So I oh, just go backwards. I would do, if you have to do annotations, I'd use the fine pencil line. Just draw a little arrow, a little squiggle like that. And then top advice, if your handwriting's rubbish, just don't write. Um, do your annotation with a text box in PowerPoint or within OneNote. If your handwriting's okay, then do it in block capital letters, um, as I show you here. So uh, let's just suggest this is, I'm gonna call this a mood light. So I'm gonna go M O O D L I G H T. I don't know why I'm spelling it to you. Mood light, less is more. All right. That's all the person needs to communicate that. Uh, this looks like it's cushioned. It looks to me like some kind of fabric. So I'm just gonna put fabric cushion design. Still no idea what this product is. Maybe it's turning into some kind of, maybe I could blag that this is some kind of travel sleeping pillow with built-in mood light and sound um, that you put in the car, rest your head on. It's starting to look like something and become something. And genuinely, this just came out of nowhere. Uh, but the point is, sometimes you have to just start sketching to get an idea. But I hope that helps. I know it was a little bit long because I'm walking you through it, but follow those methods and try them yourself. Here's two I did earlier, again, completely random. Um, and if you do that, I think it's much easier if you've got access to a Surface Pro or drawing tablet than faffing around with paper where correcting your mistakes takes much, much longer. Okay, anyway, hope it helped. Do your best.